Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to review this cell phone booster. This is by HiBoost. It's the 4K Plus Pro model. What this does is what it sounds like. It essentially boosts your voice and your data signal on your cell phone. And normally the way a cell phone would work is it would connect to the cell tower and, you know, depending how congested it is or how far it is, then you essentially get your signal. What this does is it connects to the cell tower and it amplifies the signal, essentially boosting your coverage. It comes with a user manual. I probably actually need to look, take a look at this one. And a little thank you card. And, well, let's see this stuff. So we have some cables, the connectors. I guess we'll, I'll have to see how it connects and stuff because I'm actually new to this. So this is the piece that goes inside that essentially connects to the outdoor amplifier and you can also put in an indoor amplifier. I guess if you have a bigger home, you can do that as well. So these are, yeah. And you could probably mount it to a wall and it looks like there's some signals down here as well. Okay. And I believe this is supposed to work with the main carriers in the US possibly in Canada as well. Okay, so this looks like some sticky tape. So some more hardware. This is probably how it attaches, I'm assuming. Yeah, so I guess you would probably bolt this and then slide this in. At least that it is my assumption. And another booster signal. I guess here some screws, anchors to bolt it to the wall, power for this one I'm assuming. And this is 100 to 240 volts, so it should work in most places, a regular power plug there. And this is probably for the outdoor antenna if I had to guess, essentially everything you need. And yeah. So this thing feels pretty lightweight. This feels like, this is plastic. Okay. And there's some more cables. And it's probably a little antenna right here. And I believe this is the indoor antenna booster. Yeah, indoor wide panel antenna. And that connects with that. So I'm assuming if this is a bigger house, you'd probably need that. So I finished this part of the insulation. I basically got this from an old antenna that I didn't need. So I attached this to the piece of wood um, on top of the roof right now. And essentially, I used this bracket to connect it, the one that it comes with. I attached this. I screwed it in so much that it bent, so I know it's pretty strong. And I'm aiming the antenna towards the... T-Mobile Tower, which is the one I'm trying to boost. But granted, it should boost all of them, but they recommend for you to aim it to a tower. And this has to be up. So essentially, this has to be in that position, so I should be good to go. But yeah, they recommend aiming it towards the tower that you want to boost the most, which in my case is T-Mobile. And this is attached. I tightened that. We should be good to go. And I'm going to run this through the attic. Now that I've installed the outdoor antenna, I brought this cable through the attic, which is connected to the outdoor antenna, and I'm going to connect it to this booster, and I'm gonna connect it to this side where it says outdoor, and this is where I'm gonna plug in the power. Now, if I wanted to use the indoor antenna, I would just connect it to this, but my place isn't big enough for me to need that, so I'm just gonna leave this one alone. So going ahead and connecting it. So there are three official, or unofficial requirements for this thing. Number one is they want you to have a 20 foot vertical distance between this guy and that outdoor antenna if possible. Number two, they want there to be at least a 20 foot separation. And number three, they want this, the back of this to face the back of the antenna. So because my antenna is on the other side, I'm going to place it like this and this is going to give me that back to back and we should be good to go. Whereas if my antenna was on the other side, I would basically find a wall to put it like this. 
So I've already screwed it in and uh, up there, but let me show you guys what the screen looks like so you guys can see a close up of this thing. Okay, so you could see the boost over here. Essentially, I'm getting, you know, the LT700 is maxed out at 10. The cell 800 is 8, sometimes that goes to 9. And the PCS1900 is 9, 8, well, 9 right now. And essentially, they kind of go up and down by 1 or 2 or 3, and that's supposedly normal according to their instructions. And the very last one, the AWS2100, that's around 7, that kind of just stays there. And you could see pretty much these are indicators, so you could look at these as troubleshooting, but basically this thing blinking is fine, power green and ISO green, that means I'm good to go. So this was the place I decided to put it, next to my ring alarm actually, and it's fine over here. So I've already drilled that piece into place, so you know I just put the anchors and put the screws and essentially this thing just slides in. And that's pretty much it good to go after I got the app I came up and I basically adjusted this thing I turned it around pretty much all the different ways possible and I found this to be the best possible way of putting it to get the best possible signal and I cable tied it and good to go now let's test it out another thing to mention is it actually does come with an app if you choose to use one it's called signal supervisor and I got it on my iPhone and essentially it gives you the same piece of information that you see on the screen on this which is very very useful when you're on the roof and you're rotating the antenna to see where you're getting the best possible signal this is actually, it makes it very easy because you twist it and you can update this and it's good to go. Granted, this does work for wi with Wi-Fi for me, so I do need to be on Wi-Fi and that thing needs to be on the Wi-Fi for this to work. It might work with Bluetooth as well, but I'm using Wi-Fi. So, and you can also go inside settings and find out more information if you want to know that as well. So I have this thing hooked up to one of those smart outlets so I could turn it on and off pretty instantly. And I'm gonna have my phone in the background. And Oh, and if you guys are wondering, this light does turn off after a while, after about a minute or two. So there's no background light. You, the numbers are still there, but it's kind of like, you know, without the backlight. So I have my phone here and I'm off Wi-Fi. And you could see that I have, I'm on 5G with full bars. So. Conceptually, this thing looks pretty crazy. It's like, wow, you have really good coverage and you're on 5G, so you're good to go. So now I'm gonna turn that off. So you guys could see that it turned off in the background because I'm using that smart app thing, the, the smart plug outlet. And you could see that my bar is instantly dropped. As soon as I turn that thing off, my bar is instantly dropped. Now I'm gonna turn it on. So it's gonna turn on, it's gonna initialize. And you could see that Already, it's not even done initializing, and I'm already at full bars again. So in terms of voice, this thing is phenomenal. So you do need some coverage in your home. So if you have absolutely zero coverage, at least outside you have zero coverage, this isn't really going to do anything. But if you have like kind of weak coverage outside, this thing will boost it. So you can see that I do get to full bars. However, Let's do a speed test. So, on the speed test app, in fact, let me close this and like reopen this again. So, take it to the speed test app. And let's hit go. And let's see how fast my internet speeds are with 5G. It's almost a joke, guys. If you guys watch any of my Wi-Fi videos, uh, you could <laughs> you could see why. I do so many router reviews just because, uh, yeah, my coverage here is pretty bad. So I'm heavily dependent on Wi-Fi in terms of internet speeds. So you can see my download speeds are pretty bad at 0.58 megabits per second. And the upload is okay. It's So it's at 9 megabits per second. So what I've noticed is that generally speaking, this thing does nothing for the download speeds but it looks like it improves the upload speeds a bit so again I turned it off and I'm gonna test it again you can see my bars fell again immediately after turning it off once it comes into focus there it is so you can see that my bars did drop and 
Okay, I'm doing a speed test. In fact, actually download speeds, I'm getting just a teeny bit better with it off. But this could also be, again, I'm on a public speed test server and it could be that as well. But what I have noticed is with download speeds, it doesn't really do much. Uh, but with upload speeds, it does do a little bit. So voice, you guys clearly saw that it, it literally goes to full bars as soon as I turn it on. However, with data, I didn't really notice too much of a difference. I mean, the download speed looked like it stayed the same or it actually slowed down a bit, where the upload speed did increase a bit. But I mean, these are so small that it's almost negligible. I mean, percentage-wise, yes, there is a difference. If we were to count it percentage-wise, I could say, oh, there was like 150% increase in upload speeds and like, I don't know, like a 200% decrease in download speeds. But I mean, these numbers are so small that it could literally just be that when I run the test again, it's just that the speed test server itself is busy and that's probably the cause of it. So that's kind of, so the numbers are so small that you know, if, if I turned it on and it went from like 3 megabits per second to like 30 or 50 or 60 or something like that, I'd be like, okay, there's a huge difference. Now, another thing I want to say is that results will vary by quite a bit, I would think, depending on where you install it, where you are, where the tower is in reference to you. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. As always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.